Hi guys, in this video I'll be asking what is a tropism and also looking at the role of auxins in phototropism and the role of auxins in gravitropism as well as investigating plant growth responses. And finally, a summary. Animals need to respond to the environment in order to survive. For example, if the environment changes and the temperature becomes too cold for the animal, the animal might start shivering to increase their body temperature. Like animals, plants must also be able to detect and respond to stimuli or changes in the environment. So plants need to detect what's happening around them and respond to these changes. For example, plants can grow in a particular direction in response to certain stimuli, and this is called a tropism. There are two tropisms we're interested in. This is phototropism, or response to light, and gravitropism, which is response to gravity. I'll be discussing phototropism, which is a response to light, or gravitropism, also known as stereotropism, which is a response to the force of gravity. So what causes these changes in growth? Well, the plant hormone auxin is responsible for these plant tropisms. It's made in cells near the tips of plant shoots or roots and controls cell elongation. And cell elongation basically means that the cells of the plant gets bigger or longer. Auxin stimulates cell elongation in the shoot. So auxin causes these cells in the tip of the root to get bigger. And this causes growth of the shoot. Auxin also inhibits cell elongation in the roots. So auxin causes these cells to decrease in size. Growing towards or away from stimuli, such as light, depends on the distribution of auxin. Uneven distribution of auxin causes unequal growth rates. This makes the root or shoot grow in a particular direction. So these pink dots represent auxin. And at the shoot, this causes cell elongation, and this causes an increase in growth rate on this side of the shoot. As there's less auxin on this side of the shoot, it means that growth rate is slower. Due to the unequal growth rates, it means that the plants will grow in the direction in which the plant growth rate is slower. So in this case, the shoot will bend towards the right. So now I've given a general overview on tropisms, and now I'm going to focus on phototropism. So what is positive phototropism? Positive phototropism means a plant grows towards light. And this is desirable in shoots because it maximizes the amount of light they receive for photosynthesis. So if plants get more sunlight, this increases the rate of photosynthesis. This is really useful for the plant as it means that more food is produced so it can grow faster and the plant is more likely to survive. So now let's go through the steps of positive phototropism. Well, the first step in positive phototropism is that when the light hits the shoe tip from one direction, auxin accumulates in the opposite side, i.e. the side that's in the shade. This means if the sun is directly above the plant and hits the center of the shoot, then the plant won't grow to either side. This is because auxin is evenly distributed around the shoot tip and so all cells elongate equally. If the sun is on one side of the shoot, it means that one side of the shoot is in the light. The other side of the shoot is in the shade. The shaded side is where auxin accumulates, and this causes cell elongation. And if auxin is on mostly one side of the plant, it means that cells grow or elongate faster in the shaded side, and the shoot bends towards the light as a result. So in the side with the light, there's not much auxin and not much elongation. However, in the shaded side, there's lots of auxin and lots of cell elongation. This causes the shoot to bend towards the light. And as I said before, this doesn't happen when the shoot is grown so the light falls in it evenly, as auxin is evenly spread. So here you can see the plant grows straight towards the light. So let's look at what happens in the roots. So in the roots, the opposite happens, and the roots display negative phototropism. So that means they grow away from the light. So this root is growing away from the light. What happens here is that auxin still accumulates on the shaded side, but this time it inhibits cell elongation, so the root bends away from the light. So this is a side of the root getting a lot of light, and this is a shaded side. Auxin accumulates on the shaded side, 
and in roots we know that auxin inhibits cell elongation. This means that the root will grow away from the light. So let's talk about gravitropism. As expected, gravity has the opposite effects on shoot and root growth. So positive gravitropism means that growth is in the same direction as the force of gravity, and we see this in the roots of the plant. Negative gravitropism means that growth is the opposite direction to the force of gravity, and we see this in the shoots of the plant. So you can see here that the shoot is growing in the opposite direction to the force of gravity. Meanwhile, the shoots are growing in the same direction as the force of gravity. Like phototropism, Gravitropism is also really important to plants. It's particularly important for germinating seeds. The plant always grows in the right way up, even if seeds are placed the wrong way up. In shoots, auxin accumulates on the lower side, so cells here elongate faster and the shoot bends upwards. So auxin accumulates on one side, and that stimulates cell elongation. And this means that the plant bends upwards. This is in the opposite direction to the force of gravity. In the roots, auxin also accumulates on the lower side. But as I mentioned before, auxin inhibits the growth in the roots, so cells grow faster in the upper part of the root. So you can see here, there's lots of auxin in the lower part of the root. So this inhibits cell elongation in the lower part of the root. And this means that the root grows downwards, in the direction of the force of gravity. So you can see here, the root is growing downwards. One interesting fact about gravitropism is that it can even happen in the dark, for example, when the seed is buried in soil. Negative gravitropism is really useful as it makes sure that the roots grow downwards to provide anchorage and to gain better access to water. This helps to keep the plant structure stable and also allows it to get the water needed for photosynthesis. So now I've talked about phototropism and gravitropism, but we can actually measure and investigate plant growth responses. So the effect of light and gravity can be investigated using cress seeds in a petri dish lined with dampened cotton wool. And you can see this in this diagram. This petri dish can be covered with a box that has a hole cut out of it so that the seeds are only receiving light from one direction. So these are the crest seeds. And these crest seeds on the petri dish are placed in a cardboard box with only one light source coming from a hole. Then we can examine the growth of the crest seeds. So we're expected to see that the seedlings grow towards the light source, showing positive phototropism. Remember, in experiments, you need controls, and the necessary controls include the type of seeds, the number of seeds, the light intensity, the temperature, and the water. We need to control for these factors as they can all affect plant growth, and this might affect how reliable our conclusions are. We can also investigate gravitropism, and this can be shown by growing crest seedlings in the dark you'll find that even when roots or shoots point in different directions at the start, eventually all shoots will grow upwards and roots will grow downwards. Another way of showing gravitropism is by placing seedlings in a clinostat. This is the device which rotates to cancel the effects of gravity on auxin distribution. So this is the clinostat. As auxin is distributed evenly, it means that the roots grow horizontally instead of downwards whereas normally the shoots grow upwards and the roots grow downwards. Results from these sorts of experiments can be recorded as length measurements or as labelled biological drawings. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.